Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. This week we head off to Chatham, Ontario to see industrial symbiosis in action. This is the amazing story of an ethanol gas plant that produces animal feed, oil for biodiesel fuel, fizz for pot, and heat and CO2 for a greenhouse that grows tomatoes. This is a case where one man's trash is indeed another man's treasure. Greenfield Ethanol has created an entire ecosystem around its plant where almost nothing goes to waste. Angelo Ligori is the plant manager at Greenfield Ethanol. We produce uh, fuel ethanol. That's the ethanol that goes in your car so that you can drive. Uh, nice, safe and sound. And we also produce the industrial uh, product line that goes into hand sanitizers, uh, some of the vodka grades and uh, you're a mouthwash. In the course of a year, Greenfield buys about 20 million bushels of corn and turns it into 200 million liters of fuel and industrial ethanol. But they also have a thriving side business where they turn their waste into feedstock for other businesses. Just put it in perspective on the products, uh, about 140,000 tons a year of distiller grain leaves our plant. The oil is around three to 4,000 tons a year. The CO2 is about 120,000 tons a year that we make. Some of it is used uh, by Praxair here. The rest, we're just starting to sell to the greenhouse uh, that's right next door to our property. Amazingly, this is a gas plant that's also producing 140,000 tons of animal feed, three to 4,000 tons of oil for biodiesel, and 120,000 tons of CO2 that just might be in the pot that you're drinking. Nearly all of the waste is reused in this industrial ecosystem. Now they're in the process of sharing the waste heat from the smokestack with the greenhouse next door. So the stack you see um, in the picture right now is uh, generally waste heat coming from our dryer system. This is where the idea of industrial symbiosis really comes alive. In effect, the Greenfield ethanol plant will be acting like a giant hot water heater for the greenhouse next door. There's enough heat coming out of that smokestack to provide 85% of the heat needed for 60 acres of greenhouse. And while too much CO2 is bad for the environment, the tomatoes in this huge greenhouse love CO2 and will grow faster as they absorb CO2 from the ethanol plant. We talked to Greg DeVries, the president of Truly Green Farms, a 22-acre greenhouse next door to the ethanol plant, about how they're planning to get heat and plant food piped directly into their building. Hi, my name is Greg DeVries and I am one of the owners and currently president and CEO of Truly Green Farms. What we're doing here at Truly Green Farms is taking a waste product, which is from Greenfield Ethanol across the road in the way of waste heat and CO2, and hoping to utilize it to power a greenhouse and produce tomatoes. Ooh, I love the smell. You like tomatoes? The right answer is yes, everybody loves tomatoes. Truly Green will grow nearly 6 million kilograms of tomatoes in their 22-acre greenhouse this year. That's about seven to eight times higher levels of production than in an outdoor field. And at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is uh, achieve three things with the elevated levels of uh, CO2 that we receive from Greenfield Ethanol. We're hoping to get a 3 to 5% increase in yield. With the waste heat that will eventually come across, we're hoping to reduce our heating costs by 50%. And then with that, we're hoping to grow what we would consider a green tomato. We're surrounded by green tomatoes here that are waiting to turn <laughs> red. But what we're talking about a green tomato is a footprint, a carbon footprint that's, that says we're a neutral carbon footprint in producing this crop. And hopefully we can substantiate we're actually a negative carbon footprint, which we think once we achieve that into the marketplace, it will be a premium to be, to be had. With the partnership with Truly Green Farms, the Greenfield Ethanol Plant will virtually close the loop on waste and emissions. But this loop is even tighter than that, as Greg DeVries explains some of the corn for the ethanol plant comes from his own family farm. And we sell corn to Greenfield Ethanol. And so when we look at this circle of how things work in the way of, of uh, flow of product, we take corn from produced at Cedarline Farms and we deliver it by truck directly across the road from Truly Green 
and we deliver it and they make ethanol out of it. Part of the byproducts of making ethanol is the distiller's grain, so after the truck is done dumping the corn down the pit for the ethanol process, we go to the back of the plant where the distiller's grain is being stored and we load that up and that truck takes it back to our feedlot operation, is used in our feeding program for the beef cattle. And then theoretically, at the end of the day, we take the waste heat that has and the CO2 that's been produced and turning our corn into ethanol and we can pipe it across the road to truly green farms and produce tomatoes. So I don't think you're going to find a much more efficient ethanol plant anywhere in the world when effectively you can take the full cycle and reuse that product again and again. This is a stellar example of industrial symbiosis where nearly all of the waste of an ethanol plant, including the stuff going out of the smokestack, is being used or reused. And it could also be a game changer for the greenhouse business. About 40% of the expense of a greenhouse is heating. This cuts that in half. As Greg DeVries told Green Energy Futures, he now drives down the road and looks at smokestacks quite differently. The simple act of growing tomatoes could mean one less smokestack in Chatham, Ontario. To learn more about Greenfield Ethanol, Truly Green Farms and Industrial Symbiosis, head on down to greenenergyfutures.ca. We've also got photos, a podcast and links to great resources at the website as well. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and like us on Facebook. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.